We are explaining how to use the Secret Prompter Specially Engineered Sony Digital Voice Recorder, model number ICDUX560. Let's walk through the operation of the recorder. The recorder settings have been configured for optimal use with the Secret Prompter system. Now, let's go over the recorder functions. Let's start by turning the recorder on. Slide the power hold switch to power and hold it until the display window turns on, then release the switch. To turn the power off, slide the power switch to power and hold until power off appears on the display window. Important note, if the power switch is held in the down position for 8 seconds or longer, the recorder will restart. If this happens while the recorder is in operation, data and stored settings may be lost. Now, let's turn the recorder back on. Again, slide the power switch to power and hold until the display window turns on. Now, let's take a look at the hold function of the power hold switch. The hold function disables all the buttons on the recorder to prevent unintentional operation. This is handy when the recorder is on your body, but not in use. With the recorder powered on, slide the hold switch to the hold position. The word hold displays for approximately 3 seconds, and all the buttons are disabled. Now, let's slide the power hold switch back to the center position. To adjust the playback volume, use the volume button. The minus end of the button decreases the volume. The plus end increases it. Next is the USB connector. It has two functions, charging the battery and transferring files to and from a computer. The USB connector is housed inside the recorder. To open it, push the lever in the direction of the arrow. To retract the connector, slide the lever in the opposite direction. Important note, do not try to close the USB connector without sliding the lever. This can damage the recorder and void the warranty. The recorder is equipped with a built-in rechargeable lithium-ion battery. There are two ways to charge the battery. First, by connecting the recorder to a running computer. Second, by using a USB-AC adapter that is at least 3.7 volts, not supplied. The recorder can be used while charging with either of these methods. To connect the recorder to a computer, first, make sure the computer is powered on. Insert the recorder USB connector into the USB port of the computer. The computer will recognize the recorder as a USB storage device. As the battery is charging, the word connecting will appear on the recorder display window, along with a battery indicator animation. When the battery is fully charged, it will indicate full. A depleted battery takes about 2 hours and 30 minutes to fully charge. The recorder can also be charged with a USB-AC adapter. Make sure the adapter supports at least 3.7 volts. Plug the USB connector into the adapter. Then, plug the adapter into a power source. The battery indicator animation will appear on the recorder display. Once the battery is fully charged, it will indicate full. Removing the recorder from the computer without properly disconnecting it can result in corrupt files and damage to the recorder. To safely disconnect the recorder from the computer, follow these steps. First, ensure all files on the recorder USB drive have been saved and closed and the recorder is not in play mode. On a PC, open File Explorer and locate the device labeled SP Recorder. On a Mac, look in the sidebar finder and locate the device labeled SP Recorder. Right-click on the device and select Eject. Now, it is safe to remove the recorder. If your computer is a PC, you can use the USB connector to install the Sound Organizer app version 2 on your computer. This app offers many time-saving features. For example, one mouse click protects all the files on the recorder from being accidentally deleted. It also allows you to easily exchange files between the recorder and computer. The Sound Organizer app is loaded on the recorder. To access it, connect the recorder to a computer and open the folder labeled Windows under SP Recorder. You'll find additional resources in that folder as well. If your computer is a Mac, you can simply drag and drop your audio files from the computer onto the recorder or vice versa. There is a folder on the SP Recorder labeled Mac where you will find additional resources. Mac users will need to protect their tracks once they are on the recorder. Each track must be individually protected. To do this, long press the back home button and use the rewind and forward buttons to navigate to recorded files. Press the play enter button to select. Select the folder where your tracks are located. Next, select built-in memory. Navigate to the highlighted track you want to protect. Press the option button on the lower right corner of the recorder. 
Select Protect by pressing the Play Enter button. The words Please Wait will appear on the display, then the word Protected will flash momentarily. When playing a protected track, a lock icon will appear on the lower right corner of the display. This is a handy way to verify that the track is protected. To delete a protected track, first, remove the protection. Follow the same procedure, but select Do Not Protect and press Enter. Let's demonstrate this. Navigate back to the recorded file that we protected. Make sure it is highlighted. Press the Option button on the lower right corner of the recorder. Select Do Not Protect by pressing the Play Enter button. The words Please Wait will appear in the display, then it will flash no protection. If you would like to delete a track, navigate to it and verify that it is highlighted. Press the Options button at the lower right of the recorder and use the down arrow button to navigate to the Delete a File option in the menu. Press the Play Enter button to delete the file. The track will play, and the display will ask you to confirm that you want to delete the track. Use the up arrow to select Yes, then press the Play Pause button to confirm the file deletion. Next, let's take a look at the speaker located at the bottom of the recorder. The volume button on the side of the recorder controls both the speaker and the headphone jack volume. Important note, no sound will come from the speaker if a cable is plugged into the headphone jack. The recorder is equipped with built-in, usable memory of approximately 3.2 GB, which is more than adequate for use with the secret prompter system. There is also a micro SD card slot. To access it, open the cover. The maximum card capacity is 64 GB. Important note, do not use a computer to format the built-in memory or an SD card. It is imperative to use the recorder when formatting both built-in memory and SD cards. Otherwise, a file system error can occur. Refer to the Sony Help Guide extensive instructions on formatting the memory for more details. The recorder is equipped with two built-in microphones, one on the left and one on the right. For best results when recording, hold the recorder 5 to 6 inches from your mouth. To record, press the Record Pause button. You can check the record volume by looking at the display window on the recorder. It will show dB meters for the left and right microphones, and the dB reading for each mic is highlighted. The optimal microphone volume is around minus 12 dB. To change the dB readings, move the recorder closer or farther away from your mouth. To stop recording, press the Stop button. The recorder has two input jacks, a red external microphone and a black headphone jack. The red jack is for the trunk line connector cable which connects to the remote pause switches. We'll go over those in another video. The black jack is for the audio feed. Depending on which secret prompter system you have, this plug is for the neck loop, multimedia hub, or touchscreen mic. The sound is transmitted from the recorder through one of these devices to the earpiece. Again, these devices will be covered in detail in another video. Now, let's take a look at how to make a voice recording. To record, press the Record Pause button. The indicator light will show solid red. Remember to hold the recorder 5 to 6 inches from your mouth for the best sound quality. The optimal recording volume is around minus 12 dB. And again, you can check the dB meters on the display screen. To pause while recording, press the Pause button again. The red light and the display screen will flash, indicating pause mode. To resume recording, press the Pause button. When your recording is complete, press the Stop button. The screen will display the message Please Wait while your file is saved. The recorder is pre-configured to save your audio recording to the built-in memory in the Recorded Files section. The center button performs three actions, Play, Pause, and Enter. It has a raised locator dot. We'll talk about the Enter function later. Right now, we're going to cover how to play and pause an audio recording. To play, press the center button. Pressing the same button will pause the playback. To resume playing, press the center button again. Side note, you can also stop playback by pressing the stop button. To rewind back to the beginning of the track, short press the rewind button. While a track is playing, you can quickly fast forward or rewind to a particular location. Press the play button to play the track. If you want to fast forward, press and hold the right button, which is fast forward. Once you reach the desired location, release the button and the track will begin playing from that location. To quickly rewind, press and hold the left button, which is rewind. When you press either button, the recorder takes two seconds to respond. To stop playback at any time, press either the stop or play button. When the recorder is not in playback mode and the fast forward button is pressed, the recorder instantly skips to the beginning of the next track. When the rewind button is pressed, 
it reverts back to the beginning of the current track. Next, let's go over the DPC or Digital Pitch Control. The DPC changes the playback speed of every track on the recorder, so they all play at the same speed. Thanks to digital technology, tracks will still play in natural tones when the playback speed has been adjusted. If you're just learning to use the secret prompter or you're working with new material, we recommend setting the DPC to 0.9. As you become more proficient, the DPC can be increased. If the recording seems too fast or too slow for you to comfortably listen to the words and repeat them, there is a recommended method for secret prompter users to adjust the speed. While the recorder is playing a track, Access the DPC function by pressing the DPC button. The speed control settings screen will display. Press the up arrow button to turn the DPC on. Side note, the Sony Help Guide extensive instructions does not include this method, so make a note to return to this point in the video if you need to. Once the DPC is on, adjust the speed as you listen to the track and repeat the words. To decrease the speed, press the left arrow button. To increase the speed, press the right arrow button. The playback speed can be adjusted in a range between 0.25 and 3 times. Make the necessary adjustments to the speed until you feel comfortable hearing and repeating the words. To save the new speed setting, press the center play button. Important side note, the DPC applies the same adjustment to all the tracks on the recorder. In other words, it changes the speed of the track you are listening to, as well as all the other tracks. If you are not using the DPC function, make sure it is turned off. If you only need to change the speed of one track, not all the tracks, use an audio editing program on your computer, like Ocean Audio or Audacity, to change the speed, then reload the track onto the recorder. Now let's talk about how to locate recordings stored on the recorder. Long press the Back Home button to go to the Home menu. Use the Rewind and Forward buttons to navigate to recorded files, then press the Center Play button to select, you will see a list of all the folders on the recorder. Recordings made directly onto the recorder are stored in the latest recordings folder. To access recordings that were dragged from a computer, select folders by pressing the center play button. Then select built-in memory. All the tracks inside a folder play in sequential order. We strongly suggest numbering the tracks in the order you want them to play. The recorder is set to work with the secret prompter system by playing one track at a time. Once a track finishes playing, the recorder automatically advances to the next track and pauses. When you're ready to play the next track, simply press the remote switch. If the recorder has been inactive or uncharged for a prolonged time, it will revert back to Sony factory settings, and both the initial settings and the secret prompter optimized settings will need to be reconfigured. For instructions on how to reconfigure the settings, refer to the video titled, Restoring Optimized Settings. This concludes the instructions for the Sony Digital Voice Recorder that has been specially engineered to work with the Secret Prompter system. If you need additional help, please email info at secretprompter.com.